I think one of the most important productivity tools we have is our calendar. And most people don't schedule like they schedule maybe investor meetings or sales meetings or Zoom team calls, but they're not scheduling their implementation, their application. Mm -hmm. And I think for every a good rule of thumb is just like for every hour you spend listening and learning something like on this podcast, you should schedule an hour putting it into play. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited about today's guest. He is somebody who Chris and I met quite a few years ago. And the second we met him, we were so impressed with this human being. We actually first heard him speak and were blown away and then got to spend some time with him. And I can tell you that this is the type of human who just changes your life. And you guys, I can't wait for you to listen to this because he is all about helping you Make your brain better. And my guest today is Jim Quick. He's an internationally acclaimed authority in the realm of brain optimization, memory improvement, and accelerated learning. And let me tell you, I used to think that I could not memorize things. And Jim has taught me so many different methods around being able to remember things better, whether it's talks or being able to remember things that I am trying to recall, like names. You guys, he truly is the expert and has dedicated his life to helping people tap into their brain's fullest potentials. I think you're going to get so many nuggets out of this podcast, so let's dive in. All right, Mr. Jim Quick, how you doing, buddy? We've missed you, man. Chris and Lori, thank you for having me. This is really special. Yeah. This is honestly just selfish for us because, well, we just caught up for a few minutes there in the beginning, but now we get to sort of catch up on this podcast to see everything that you're up to because you're doing some really awesome stuff right now. Like you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited about your, do we call this a new book? Do we call this a new version of the book? Limitless Expanded it's, Edition? Yeah, it's the updated, it has like 120 new pages, just a lot of new content, strategies, methodologies for accelerated learning and brain optimization. Yeah, I know, I know. I, but we're definitely not updating this ever again. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is final, it's complete. It's my magnum opus. If I was to, you know, something happened to me, I was teleported somewhere off the planet. This is what I want to leave behind. Oh wow. God, it is That's an a big manual. statement. That's cool. I have to tell you, I have just in all of the different rooms that I've been in lately, your name has come up in almost all of them, mm -hmm. which is so crazy. Like people are like, do you know who Jim Quick is? I'm like, I know Jim Quick from way back. Like I try to yeah. claim it like we go way back. But. <laughs> yeah, a lot of history. We, we're coming up on almost 10 years probably of knowing each other at this point. That's a long time. Stop time, it. Time flies. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, but our brains just get better because of you. So this is great. This is very true. I love it. <laughs> I want to start with the quizzes that you had us take. Mm -hmm. You said, hey, take this quiz. It's going to be really fun. I took the quiz. I felt like I was learning stuff about myself while mm -hmm. I took the quick quiz. It was yeah. only like three, four minutes. So it was really easy. But it came out that I was a cheetah. Yeah. And we just found out it also came out that Lori was a cheetah. So what in the world does this mean about us, Jim? So this is a cheetah and we just had a little party. So we have these like little, like, uh, <laughs> this is AI art that we created. So we created a brain code and it's a four minute, maybe it takes three or four minutes to go through multiple choice. Kind of like how people, what game of Thrones or Harry Potter character are you kind of, kind of thing. And it's fun, but it's very insightful. I think it's so important. Self-awareness is to just kind of know your strengths and know your traits. And this is one of the things kind of like your love languages, but for your brain. And so uh, I had pulled, I was inspired by various things in psychology and sciences, uh, personality types like Myers-Briggs to build this out, left brain, right brain dominance theory, uh, visual auditory kinesthetic learning styles, multiple intelligence theory out of Harvard and introvert extrovert. So I, I melded all of this as inspiration. I've been using it with one-on-one -on -one clients for years, but this is the first time we put it out publicly. So it's a simple quiz. And basically the premise is it's not how smart you are. It's how are you smart? Mm. It's not how smart you are or how smart your team is it's, or your friends are. It's how are they smart? Because everybody has certain strengths that we really want to lean into. That's kind of like your element. And these are cognitive types. So I use an acronym code, C-O-D-E, to help you remember it. So I'll go through really fast. The C are the two of you, your cheetahs. And cheetahs are amazing because they're often entrepreneurs. Their primary trait, their dominant trait is action. 
Mm-hmm. They're very good at putting things into play. They don't just learn things for the sake of learning it. They apply it, they implement it, they execute. We were talking even before that you could iterate a million times in your ideas, but actually putting stuff out there is, is where the rubber meets the road. Mm-hmm. Cheetahs thrive in fast-paced environments. They can adapt. They have very strong intuition. So uh, the O in code are your owls. And their dominant trait is logic. They love the data. They love the facts. They love the figures. They do the research. And by the way, we're not limited to just one. We're a composite, obviously. But there's usually one that is uh, more dominant than the others. And, uh, and even if you just think about an owl and a cheetah, they would learn different. You know, they would even communicate different. You know, cheetahs are more direct and to the point up kind of beating around the bush because that would take time, right? Mm-hmm. And owls are, are more linear. They're more organized in their presentations, their communications, their thinking. The D in code are your dolphins. And this is a fun one. Dolphins are your visionaries. They're very creative. They're really good at pattern recognition. So it would be like a Walt Disney, a JK Rawlings, kind of thing of that type. So that's your dolphin. And then finally, your E are your elephants. And the elephants are your empaths. Mm -hmm. They love collaboration. They're your team builders. These are people that have high levels of empathy. So they want people to feel seen. They want people to feel valued and heard. Even in their communication style, they try to come to some kind of consensus where others could talk about I or or me. They're using more words that are more inclusive, like we and us, because they come from from that kind of uh, herd mentality. And so just knowing these four animals allows you, it informs like what your strengths are. Like we had our team take it, this quiz, and a hundred percent of our customer service team were elephants. And we didn't plan wow. it. But it's interesting how based on your strengths right, and your values, the way you see the world and think, you're gonna find positions that align with that, so those superpowers, if you will. And that makes sense because they're there, high empathy, compassion, interpersonal skills, they're be supportive, hold the, their community builders, uh, you know, in our, in our social media and everywhere else. Our CFO is a very strong owl. And you want, I guess you want that person to be numbers, right? My business partner, Alexis, of 17 years, she's our CEO. She's a dolphin. She's a creative visionary. She does, yeah, has a, a vision for where we're going. And she's very passionate around that. So these are qualities of these different animals. And you can see this also in pop culture. I mean, you take anything like friends, right? Joey would be the, the cheetah, just very instinctual, just always acting and uh, moving forward. You would have, let's say, Phoebe would be the dolphin, the creative music, mm-hmm. art, all, all of that. Ross would be the owl, the scientist, the the professor, all the research, the facts. I imagine Monica would be the elephant because she always wanted to host mm-hmm. every party. It always had to be at her apartment. She held everyone together that way. So you can see these kind of archetypes and it determines, you could use it for hiring, for management, for parenting, for coaching, for influence and sales, for fundraising. Because once you understand their animal type, because if you don't, What happens often when we're talking about learning is sometimes your brain animal is different than the teacher's brain animal. And you just kind of pass each other like two ships in a night and you don't even Mm -hmm. recognize the other ones there and there's no connection, right? Similar to love languages, people tend to communicate in their animal type as if they're communicating to somebody with the same type. And that's not always the case. Yeah. Jim, this makes so much sense because I didn't finish college and I thought there was something wrong with me because I didn't like learning in school. And I didn't like learning the way that they taught me in school, but I loved learning on the job. And I remember I just wanted to be out working and participating in the economy and learning as I physically do things and taking action and all that. So it makes a lot of sense because for a long time, I thought, what's wrong with me that I don't want to go get my bachelor's and my master's and my all these other things that people said that you needed in order to be successful. And you nailed it when you said, it's not how smart are you, it's how are you smart? And all of a sudden, I felt like that gave me permission to lean into the how that I'm smart instead of how smart am I? That's an incredibly empowering statement too. I just thought if someone would have said that to me when I was younger, Mm -hmm. because I did not graduate high school, but I knew I was really smart. Like I knew that when I went in rooms and I knew I was the hardest worker in the room and I knew I was like very hands-on. So if someone would have just said that to me, I think that I would have felt because I carried so much shame for so many years, that would have immediately made sense that yeah. I'm still smart. It's just in other arenas. So I love that you're putting language around it. And I appreciate that too, because I think we're also best, you know, for me, I had some learning difficulties, pretty severe and brain injuries and just like as a child. So I think also, I think we're, we're best suited to support and serve the person we once were. Yeah. 
know, and so it's kind of like even when you think about that inner child and and be the parents that you wish that you you had or be the coach or the mentor to yourself. But this also, you're right, it takes away the shame and the judgment you have for other people because they're just acting in accordance to like their brain type. But it also takes the self judgment away. Also, it gives yourself a little bit more self compassion. You be kind to yourself because this is, and then you could kind of surround yourself with a team that also is leaning into their element and and their own brain type. So what happens is if when people go to mybrainanimal.com, they could take the quiz. There's nothing to buy. It takes like four minutes. And then just like there's personalized medicine based on your genetics or personalized nutrition based on your microbiome, this is like personalized learning based on this assessment. And then I show you based on your animal, how you could actually read better, not just faster, but better comprehension. I show you, you can remember names based on your animal type. And then we just go on building teams, building learning organizations, because a cheetah, when they're reading, you imagine they're, it's action. They're going through fast, right? They're going through and getting into kind of the gist of it. Owls are looking for the little details for everything. And obviously these two people invest differently right? Mm -hmm. They'd be persuaded differently. And an elephant who has empathy and leaning more into feelings is to make different decisions than a dolphin that you could lead by painting a picture for them. So I think it's really fascinating. So there's so many different applications. It's a good bit in book on itself, but it's a full, one of the largest chapters in Limitless Expanded. And then also people can, to get a taste of it, take the quiz at mybrainanimal.com and you'll get a full map on on how to use it. To oh my gosh, seriously, Go to mybrainanimal.com because it just made me feel totally normal in the way that I learned. And it kind of made me think of my next question. So you're one of the experts out there helping people read and retain better. Mm -hmm. And if I were to sit down and hold a book, like right now I'm reading the new Elon Musk book, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to sit down and hold a book and read it, it is tough. Buddy, it's real tough for me. Like <laughs> I have to read the same page three times over. I don't yeah. retain it. I don't remember what I just read on that page. But if I listen to it, not yeah. only do I consume the books better, but I listen on like one and a half speed yeah, or it feels yeah. too slow for me. So does that have something to do with like the way I learn? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's interesting. So you could actually listen it to it quicker on like Audible or something. A cheetah would do that. And so it's interesting because so reading is a skill and, some, and most of us didn't learn how to do it properly. And if we're not mm -hmm. good at something, we probably don't, aren't going to do it very often. So we're not going to get any better at it. It's like, golf. Uh, Father-in-law plays all the time. My father plays all the time. And I always get invited for work to go play. And I just, it's not fun for me because I'm just not that great at it. Right. So I don't do it very often, but there's this confidence, competence loop. The more competent you get, the more confidence you get. But same thing with reading because our skill, I mean, hasn't been improved since the last time we were taught. And that was probably when we were six years old. You know, there's a class called reading. So yeah, a couple of things you could do. And, and I'm a fan of audiobooks, certainly, that you could put it on faster speed, especially. But if someone's going to read on an ebook or a physical book, reading is a different, it, uses, it activates a different part of, of your brain. People actually read, will get more out of it usually if they do it properly through a couple of techniques I'll share with you right now. Only because sometimes when people are listening to an audiobook, they're usually doing something else. Mm. Driving, okay. They could be cleaning, they okay. could be working out, right? So so inherently their attention, uh, this is their multitasking is going to be split. And so as opposed to reading, because you're probably, when you're reading, probably not driving. Yeah. right? Or trying to clean the house or something like that. Yeah. Well, leaders are readers, right? We've heard this so, so many times. It's, uh, but a lot of people buy books, they sit on your shelf unread and it becomes shelf help, not self-help. <laughs> but reading is really the key. Even Warren Buffett uh, reads 500 pages a day. I mean, if people seen pictures of me with Elon or Oprah or any of these people, people always ask how we bonded books, right? Mm. And so you read to succeed. What I would say is a couple of quick things to first, first faster and smarter reading. Using a visual pacer will help you read faster. So let's back up. If you pick a book up and then put a mark in the margin where you left off and put your phone to time it for 60 seconds, and then at the end of 60 seconds, put a mark in the margin where you left off and then count the number of lines, mm -hmm. all right, that's your base rate. Because you always have to be able to manage it. You have to measure it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you set the alarm to go 60 seconds. And this time you read where you left off, but this time just underline the words with your finger or a pen or highlighter, you're not actually marking up the page or touching the page or the screen. You're just going margin to margin and do it for 60 seconds. And at the end of 60 seconds, count the number of lines. From the majority of everyone listening, that second number will be 25, 50% greater. 
Whoa, wow. that's not a little bit because reading is probably the biggest consumer of time for most activities. I mean, think about how much reading research or emails or media or you know, things that you have to keep a track of, right? Or your inbox. So four or five hours a day, if you could just double your reading speed, save two hours a day, that's huge. Yeah. Even save one hour a day, it's 365 hours a year divided by 40 hours in a week, you know, work week is like nine. You get over nine weeks of productivity, two months of productivity, just saving one hour on something like that. The reason why we do the speed reading training at Facebook, Nike, Google, SpaceX, all these places is if half their time is being paid to read, that means half their salary is going towards reading. So if someone's making hundred K, 50 K is just spent just processing information. And so that's a real, that's a real need a mover for a lot of people. So yes, yeah, so using a visual pacer and it could be a mouse on a computer. It could be your pen highlighter. I least use my finger just back and forth, not skipping anything. Traditional speed reading is more skimming, scanning, getting the gist of things. And we work with a lot of financial advisors, doctors, you don't want your doctor to get the gist of what she's reading. Right. And so <laughs> using your finger, 25, 50% left. Now, how do you get better comprehension? Now, by the way, people think if they went faster that they would understand less. Mm -hmm. We have students in every country in the world, 195 nations. We have a lot of data. We actually find that the faster the readers actually understand more because they have better focus. It's kind of mm -hmm. like driving a car. If you're going really slow in your neighborhood and you're not really focused on driving, have you ever like ended up where you were going and you don't even remember the trip there? Kind of yeah, thing. it's scary, but yes. Right. Just like that, because we're mindless, because what are you doing? You're you're drinking your coffee, you're thinking about the dry cleaning, you're trying to tech, what singing along, whatever, right? Five different things when you're going slow. But if you're racing cars, if like F1, you're going doing 180 miles an hour, hairpin turns, are you thinking about the dry cleaning? Are you trying to text no. or check your makeup? No. Right. You're hundred percent focused on two things, what's in front of you and the act of driving. Same thing with reading. If you go really slow, you feed this supercomputer a brain, one word at uh I can't talk that slow because I'm from New York. <laughs> but if I did, if we did that in this conversation, everyone would what? They would think about other things, their mind oh, would yeah. wander, they would fall asleep. And those are the same things that happen when people read, same symptoms, because they're reading too slow. If you don't give your brain the stimulus it needs, it'll seek entertainment elsewhere in the form of distraction. Mm -hmm. So actually the greater speed will give you greater focus and the focus will give you greater understanding and comprehension. And if you want really to level up your comprehension, the key is to ask better questions. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about a lot in Limitless Expanded, the power of questions and having a dominant question and we have about 60,000 thoughts a day. And a lot of those thoughts come in the form of questions and your questions stimulate a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, RAS, which determines where you shine a spotlight on something. So as an illustration, years and years ago, my younger sister would send me emails, postcards of a very specific breed of dog who is a pug dog, right? And she kept on it multiple times a day. And I was just like, why does she keep on doing this? And I realized she's a good marketer. Her, her birthday was coming up, right? She was seeing a present. <laughs> and she ended up getting her present also from me. But I, the funny things happen. I just started seeing this pug dog everywhere. I would be at the health food store checking out and someone in front of me is holding a pug dog checking out at the cash, mm -hmm. cash register. I'd be running in my neighborhood and someone's walking six pug dogs. And so my question for everyone listening is, did the pug dogs just manifest and magically appear in my neighborhood? Did they teleport there? No, they were always there, but I was deleting them. Because the brain primarily is a deletion device. It's trying to keep information out. If you let out, we could be focusing on a billion stimuli but it, we would go insane, right? So we're, only things that we let in are the things we care about and we have questions about. And so once I started asking questions, I started seeing it. How does that relate to what we're talking about? Well, we all have these dominant questions that we ask and some people's are, their question is, how do I get people to like me? Mm -hmm. And this is exactly, we talk about this in the book, a friend of mine, we found out her dominant question that she asks hundreds of times a day is how do I get this person to like me? Mm -hmm. Now, you don't know anything, you don't know her career or what she looks like or where she lives, but you know a lot about her personality. What would you think or guess that this person is like? What are some of the characteristics or some oh. of her personality traits? If somebody's just obsessed with how do I get them to like me? People pleasing. Big yeah. time. Also very giving all the time, but also probably feels very Resent burnt out. Yeah. Resentful. Yeah. Because she's always over, overly giving. I think it's also a personality trait of not tapping into, I don't know how to say it, but like not tapping into who you are. Yeah. You're just trying to bend and flex. And that's very true. It's very true because her personality changes depending on who she's spending time with. 
because she wants to be like them, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and she is a giver to the point where they, she's a martyr. People take advantage of her on the, on the regular. Right. And so it's interesting. So you, you don't know anything about her, but you know a lot about her based on one question that she asked mm-hmm. herself. So one of the things we talk about in the book is what's our dominant question. What's the question we're asking more than any other question that is hijacking our focus. Mm-hmm. Because like for me growing up with a traumatic brain injury, I, I mean, I had, migraines almost every single day as a five, six, seven year old. I had sensory issues. I would lose my balance. So I wasn't really good at sports. So I was always the last one picked. I was called the boy with a broken brain, you know, my you know, kind of my origin story. But my question back then was how do I be invisible? Because I didn't want to be bullied anymore. I didn't want to be called on in class. So even if I see, look at old pictures of me, I was always like shrinking, like my posture, my shoulders were always collapsed because I want to take up less space. But that was my dominant question. How do I become invisible? Mm. So I don't be, so I'm not seen. And then later on, it evolved to like, oh, okay, I have the broken brain. How do I fix this? And then it got a little bit better. How do I make this better? And then I started getting answers. Similar for reading too. When you're reading, if you ever read a page in a book, got to the end and just forgot what you just read, yes. and you go back and reread it and you still don't know what you just read. Mm-hmm. Part of it is because we don't have those questions. Because if you had questions about what you're reading, you'll read it and say, oh, there's a pug dog. There's a pug dog. There's a pug dog. You start seeing those answers because you're shining a light and it acts like a magnet pulling the information in to help you to retain it. And three questions I love asking when it takes, like when people are listening to your shows is how can I use this? Like I'm obsessed with that question because most people, they do this kind of mental masturbation where it's just learning for the sake of learning and not applying. And I know cheetahs don't get that. Like owls could sit and just learn all the time and just get back and not execute on anything. Right. And the, the challenge is like, so you could say like, how can I use this? You know, and then why must I use this to give you some emotion, you know, and, and purpose? And then when will I use this? Meaning, I think one of the most important productivity tools we have is our calendar. And most people don't schedule like they schedule maybe investor meetings or sales meetings or Zoom team calls, but they're not scheduling their implementation, their application. Mm-hmm. And I think for every a good rule of thumb is just like for every hour you spend listening and learning something, like on this podcast you should schedule an hour putting it into play. Oh man. Wow, that's that good. It's just like, it's just even, you spend, you know, three hours doing a deep dive on this and you spend three hours doing the deep work and making it happen. But I feel like knowledge by itself is not power as a potential to be power becomes power when we utilize it because common sense is not common practice. I mean, your listeners probably have forgotten more about success than most people, most of their friends and family, you know, and will ever learn. But are they using it? Because that's the difference. Because somebody reading a book and not applying it functionally, I mean, yes, it's good mental exercise to read, but functionally their life is no better than somebody who is illiterate, who couldn't read the book to begin with. Right. Really true. Hey, y'all, if you didn't know, Earn Your Happy is now a part of the Growth Day Podcast Network. This is so exciting to me because I have been looking for a really good home for the show for I can't even tell you, years, literally. And now I've finally been able to come together and collaborate with other people who have incredible shows and I want to share them with you. One of the shows is Motivation with Brennan Bouchard. And you guys, if you don't know about the beginning of my career, I literally started with Brennan Bouchard's work. It's how I launched one of my very first online courses and membership sites was because he gives so much advice that you can integrate and implement immediately. And that's what you're going to get on the show. Not just motivation, but you're going to learn exactly how to get your stuff out in the world. And not just that, but Brennan runs in the most incredible group of humans who are really doing the thing out in the world that you want to be doing. So go check it out. Go subscribe to Motivation with Brennan Bouchard. I promise you this is going to be one of those shows that no matter when you tune in, you're going to get value. Like it's not one of those that you're like, God, I listened for 30 minutes and I didn't get what I wanted. Like from the beginning, you're going to get something that changes your life or changes your business. So go check it out. Motivation with Brennan Bouchard. I know you're going to love it. I'm obsessed. 
I met a woman who it was at like a personal development event. And I was like, oh, when are you going home? And she was like, oh, I always book a day or two after an event because I integrate and implement. Mm -hmm. So she's like, whatever I take from that event, if I just go home, I forget everything. I never do the thing. And she's like, but if I stay a full day after and I put it in my calendar and I decide one thing I'm taking to change my life, I was like, you're an actual genius. Will I do it? I don't know, but I integrate pretty fast. So, but for people who don't, that's a great idea. No. And I love that because I mean, that's why even we met, I met the two of you at at a mastermind and, you know, people go to mastermind, they learn something, but they just like start putting it in action right away Mm -hmm. because it's this kind of the mindset around it, having peers to be able to share ideas and then putting it in action and having people to hold you accountable, I think is so That part. (laughs) Yeah. Accountability. Knowing that I would have to see Jim Quick again and tell him I didn't right. do something. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That accountability is, is second to none. <laughs> I have a question about let's see expanded edition because a lot of yeah. the things that we were just talking about, a lot of those were in the original book that was a smash mm-hmm. hit, New York Times bestseller, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And I read somewhere, and this really struck me. I read somewhere that Limitless, the expanded edition, were <laughs> brand new tips and tricks for learning and operating in a post-pandemic world. And yeah. it made me do two things. It made me say, oh my God, ever since the pandemic world showed up, I have a lot more trouble retaining things. And I don't know why, but we're talking about a lot more trouble. I have a lot more trouble with recall, like getting the words I want to say and that kind of thing. And then the second thing that came up for me was like, I wonder if other people are are experiencing this and what other changes did the post-pandemic world bring about that changed the way that we're learning now? Yeah, I think it's so important for post-pandemic AI world also, where Mm -hmm. we're just this. And so we could talk about that because we did a whole chapter in the new book also on how to use AI to improve your HI, your your human intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely a a culprit. I mean, more and more, when people went through the pandemic, I, I think we focused on six C's in terms of kind of becoming more limitless. You know, there's that quote in there that says, life is the letter C between B and D. B is birth, D is death again, life, C, choice. Mm -hmm. These difficult times, they could diminish you. These difficult times can distract you or these difficult times, they could develop you. We ultimately always decide. And a few things that I'm kind of thinking about to get our mind right during the chaotic times, six Cs. The first is clarity. I think it's so very important to to ask yourself the right question. Like going back to the, the speed reading, just to put a bow on that, to improve your speed, use your finger while you read, right? 25, 50%. To get better comprehension, ask more questions. So just to be clear, because questions are the answer. But questions will also provide you the first C, which is clarity. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the most important questions to ask is what's most important to you in this moment that gets your focus back to like the task at hand especially in this post-pandemic world some people are working in remote some people are working in office some people are hybrid or they're multitasking switching off from doing this and writing this report going to slack the social media and so on but clarity is definitely a superpower because i think a lot of people are burnt out not because they're doing too much i feel like a lot of people are burnt out because they're doing too little of the things that matter to them that make, yeah, them, amen. that make them come alive, right? That let really light them up and then and, and personal care. So you don't know that unless you ask those questions. And one of the questions for clarity is what's most important to me in, in our relationship, right? Mm-hmm. What's most important to me in my career? What's most important to me at this stage in my life and the impact that I have, right? And that clarity will give you your, the, your values and we make your decisions based around that. And so we relate that back to the book around purpose because even if people lack purpose for why they're reading something, they're not going to get it. Even if people lack a reason to remember someone's name, they're not going to remember that name because they have no reason to remember the person's name. So I think clarity is a good starting point. Uh, second thing, even to would help your memory, everything else in a crazy world is, is care. We know that self-care is not selfish. That's why the original book here that the expanded has it, the best brain foods, how to manage your stress, how to get your the best sleep in your life, right? All, all science-based techniques to be and principles to care, but also mm-hmm. self-care is also just realizing that you have permission to rest. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you're not responsible for fixing everything that's broken. You do not have to try and make everyone happy. So Mm -hmm. remember you take time for you, time to recover, time to replenish. But self-care, 
So that's number two, clarity care. The third thing that I feel like you get people out of a slump in this kind of post-pandemic world is contribution. And I know the two of you are are, are pillars for this, all right? You do so much for the community. I know I get to share time with you. We're just talking about Pencils of Promise, which is an organization, you know, we've supported for to build schools, different places around the world for children who need it. But also the reason why you do that also is because it allows you to tap into, because chronic stress will shrink the human brain. Chronic Mm -hmm. fear will actually suppress your immune system and make you more susceptible to colds, to flus, to viruses, various science called psychoneuro immunology. But I think what gets you out of fear is contribution, being a service to somebody else who could use it. And I really do believe you learn to earn to return. You learn to earn so that you have more to return to be able to, to be able to give, right? I and uh, mm-hmm. thank, thank you. Yeah, we sold over a million copies of the original book in just three years. Uh, oh this God. one. Oh my gosh. And part of what we did was supporting, you know, building multiple schools for Pencils of Promise, uh, for Alzheimer's research for women. Women are twice as likely to experience Alzheimer's than men. Yeah, most of the research is done on men and treatment done on men. So it's just in memory of my grandmother. But I, but contribution is a big part. And then finally, a f- just a few more things to think about. And this, this relates to like a, a being in a chaotic world is take time for for creativity. It was during the Great Plague that Sir Isaac Newton came up with his theory. He had to leave the university to go be able to go home. Apple fell on his head, whatever. He created the theories of motion, the theories of gravity. William Shakespeare during the Great Plague wrote Macbeth, right? And so this is a wonderful time. I think the future belongs to the creators. And uh, even though AI could help, you know, in that process, I still think nothing's going to replace, you know, the, the power of the human mind. So how can you be more creative? Maybe you want to create a podcast or you want to write something, you want to do music, some kind of physical expression, whatever it is. But I feel like creativity allows us, even with I read a lot of nonfiction, but I also read a lot of fiction. And I like it because I feel like it makes me more creative. Like nonfiction, you learn through information. Fiction, you learn through imagination. Yes. So to even improve your EQ, your emotional quotient and empathy, then the narrative allows you to see things from different points of view. And those are really important assets to have today to be able to succeed. And then finally, the last two things that are C's, you have clarity, you have, you have care, your contribution, your creativity, capabilities. I just want to remind, and your listeners know this, to always level up your skills because the human mind is the ultimate adaptation machine. Like everything in nature has a superpower. Some creatures could fly, some could breathe underwater, some could go really mm-hmm. fast like a cheetah, some are very strong. But human beings, we're not any of those things. But because of the power of our power, which is our power, our mind, we can fly and we can go underwater and we can go super fast, right? Because your brain is what is creating, you know, all the other powers and technologies that exist around us. So I would just remind everyone to always upgrade your knowledge, skills, and abilities. And also it'll help you live longer. There's a study done with nuns that were living 80, 90 and above, and they wanted to find out what was the key to their long life. And they said half of it was their was their faith and their gratitude. And the other half, they were lifelong learners. And because mm-hmm. they were always learning and reading and having deep discussions, it had a year to life and life to the years. It was on the cover of Time magazine. They called it Aging with Grace was the name of the study. But in terms of capabilities, I think the most important capability of all is learning how to learn. Because if there's a genie, and I could grant you any one wish to be an expert in any one subject or skill, you can say it would be, you know, investing and it could it could be coding and it could be fashion, whatever it is. But if you chose a learning to be mm-hmm. a learning expert, you could apply it to all those things. Yeah. You could learn how to learn. You could focus, you could read, you could understand, you can improve your, you can remember, think. Then you apply it towards money, management, martial arts, marketing, Mandarin, everything gets so much easier. So learning how to learn. And so Limitless Expanded is an owner's manual for your brain, have the best brain of your life and tactics to be able to learn faster, like speed read memory and so on. But then the last one, which the two of you are really good at, the last C is community. Because how do you become limitless in a limited world? We have to do it together because it does take a village. And learning nowadays is not just solo, it has to be social. 
It's not just your neurological networks, it's your social networks and who you spend time with is who you become. We, we've heard it so many times that or the average of the five people we spend the most time with because we have these things called mirror neurons, like your reflection. We imitate people around us unconsciously over time. That's why you start looking like your pet or you start having similar expressions <laughs> as your partner because we start mirroring the words, the actions, the thoughts, the character, the habits. Like whether or not you somebody smokes is less to do with their biology and more to do with does their friend smoke mm -hmm. right like if, if you're around people that just work hard all the time you're going to be working hard if you're we're around people that are exercising all the time you're going to be exercising all the time because we are social creatures and so take stock because sometimes it's those family or friends that may be, you know, kind of maybe steal your dream or some, some of your thunder just because they good intentions. Maybe they don't want to see you outgrow them and they, they lose you and there's just some kind of separation or maybe they don't want you to get your hopes up. But I think it's very important that we choose our peer group and build a community around that. And that'll insulate you for a lot of the stress and, and loneliness and isolation is a big epidemic nowadays for people's mental health. Mm -hmm. it's you just gave us the six C's, but I feel like in the past half hour, 45 minutes, you've given us 600 reasons to mm -hmm. go get Limitless, the expanded edition. And people can grab that at limitlessbook.com. Is that right? Uh, when they go to limitlessbook.com, you could get all the information there or wherever you get books, Amazon or Barnes and Noble and or support your local, uh, your local bookstore. So I've got a, a question related to this book. You mentioned there's a whole chapter on AI. And, and one yeah. of the things I was curious, I was like, I wonder what Jim thinks of this whole AI thing that's exploding everywhere. Do you think it's going to help our ability to learn and think, or is it going to hurt our ability to learn and think in the long run? I think it's going to come down to personal choice, just mm -hmm. like how we use it. Like fire is technology. It's an early form of technology and it's how we're using it. We could use it to cook our food or fire could burn down your home, right? It's just, it's how it's applied. Kind of like money too. You know, money can amplify your life or if someone's really kind of a, not a great person, they could do more harm with it. But I do think technology in the book, I talk about the four horsemen of the mental apocalypse that we have to be conscious of. And just very quickly, digital deluge, that's the overwhelm. And that like taking a sip of water out of fire hose, we're just drowning in information and information anxiety symptoms mm. we're familiar with higher blood pressure, compression of leisure time, more sleeplessness. That's why we teach speed reading, study, accelerated learning to meet the demand of the information. Second one, besides digital deluge, the second horseman is digital distraction. How do you maintain your concentration in a world full of rings, pings, dings, app notifications, social media alerts? Because we're being, you know, we're always flexing our distraction muscles. And we wonder why we can't focus when we need to, right? That's why we have a whole chapter on focus and concentration. The third one is digital dementia. This is a real term in healthcare, where it's the high reliance of technology or it's like your device is your external memory hard drive. So you think about how many phone numbers the two of you used to know mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. and it was like all of them. Right. Yeah. And how many, and phone now numbers? I know none, none. Right. And that's digital dementia. And not that I want to memorize 500 phone numbers. I mean, people see me on stage memorizing hundred numbers all the time or hundred names, but I don't want to memorize 500 phone numbers, but it should be concerning. We, we've lost the ability to remember one phone number or a pin number or a passcode or a seed phrase or something we just read or something we were going to say or something somebody said to us or someone's name. I believe two of the most costly words in life sometimes are I forgot, right? I forgot mm -hmm. to do it. I forgot to bring it. I forgot the meeting. I forgot to we just lose time, trust, a sale, everything. And on the other side, when you could easily remember things, facts, figures, languages, a presentation you need to give, a toast at a wedding, remember what you just read, remember someone's name or client information, product information, life gets so much easier. So that's why the largest chapter in the book is memory to overcome digital dementia. And finally, the last one, and I'll get to the AI, is digital deduction. And this is involved a little bit with AI. And I just made them all Ds, digital deluge, distraction, dementia, deduction. It's this Technology is doing the thinking for us. It's not just telling us, you know, it's just telling us what to think. I mean, you think about even simple getting here to there. Right now you go on Waze or your Maps app, oh gosh, right? Guilty. But we're not building that visual spatial intelligence. It's just like technology that if you had to go to the bank and it's eight blocks away and we get in our car, then we don't get our steps in, right? So it's convenient, but is it crippling also? Because mm -hmm. if you put your arm in a sling for a year, it wouldn't grow stronger. It wouldn't even stay the same. And then like if somebody has their apartment or their office on the third floor and they take the elevator every single time and they don't do the stairs, the stairs was an, was an opportunity for them to be physically fit. Mm -hmm. And so I love technology and I still think we have to maintain our mental fitness more than ever because of things like AI to be able to catch up, keep up and get ahead. 
like we use AI all the time. I mean, everybody in our, our team uses it in different respects. For when I'm coaching somebody, you could use AI to improve your HI, your human intelligence. I don't even see it as artificial intelligence. I see it more as augmented intelligence, mm -hmm. right? Augmentation, it's like a partner for you. So for example, I mentioned neuroplasticity earlier in the conversation. If someone didn't know what that was, they could go into an AI platform like a GPT to keep it simple and, and say, hey, explain to me what neuroplasticity is in a story format as if I'm eight years old. Yeah. And you'll be surprised what comes out. It gives you a base foundation. You know, I have a podcast also as well. And sometimes I, if I'm interviewing an author and I didn't get the book in time and I like to read physical books, I'm not, I don't need another reason to be on a screen personally. Then I could go in there and say, give me a summary of this book or mm -hmm. present 10, offer up 10 questions for this expert that they haven't been asked before wow. that, that are specific for my audience. And I'll describe wow. my audience, right? Or we have a, a quick bot that's in our platform. We have students in 195 nations. We fed it all our courseware. So people could go in there and they could just ask, hey, I might tell my child learn this formula or this periodic table or whatever. How would you go about doing it? And it'll come up with like answers. It's amazing. Everything we teach in Limitless Expanded, all the core, everything from mind mapping to memory palaces, you could say, hey, I have this presentation to give for work or this sales video I need to make. And then can you mind map this for me? Or can you use Jim's you know, mind palace technique to build a story so I could easily remember it? And then all of a sudden you have that. And then even we have, we're programming ours right now to measure your reading speed and reading comprehension, ask you probing questions to test you how much content that you have. But all this is available just because of AI. So I, I'm just, I, I'm very... People think that it's going to take over their jobs and the technology, you know, trucks. I mean, everyone like it took over horses, everything. There's a progression, but I really think it's the people who choose to apply it will be more valuable in the marketplace than those who don't. You really summed it up well for me when you said, eh, I don't see this artificial intelligence. I see it as augmented mm -hmm. intelligence. And then giving those examples of like how you're going to enhance your ability to learn, including yeah. I loved your prompt of teach this to me like I'm an eight year old. Because yeah. that's something I'm like, oh, now I could understand it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I love that. And something I love about you, and no pun intended on your last name, but pun intended, but like you actually, every time I either read something of yours or listen to you, there is something quick that I can take away yeah. and yeah. actually implement, which feels like a win. On top of, I know there's things that we could go a lot deeper in that are in, you know, your Limitless book, but I feel like those quick hits of winning, you've just like really mastered how to keep people learning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And every single page or every other page in the book, we have these uh, areas that they just say, it says this quick start. And it's a little exercise you can do in 60 seconds because it's just to prime people just to realize that just learning this is not going to do anything unless you put into action. I feel like we don't know something unless we could do it. Yeah. Right. A lot of people could repeat a lot of the things that the two of you have taught, but if they're not doing it, I feel like they don't really know it. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. You can't read a book on push-ups and just and just be in better shape. You have to actually do the work, right? Yeah. I, I couldn't agree percent. more. It's funny. I'll, I'll kind of sum it up by saying, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Well, your book reminds me of the pill that he took because <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah, it yeah. truly teaches us how to learn everything. Remember in a movie, like, like he'd see something and recall it, how to yeah. fight all of a sudden or how to calculate this all of a sudden or do this all of a sudden. I literally think your Limitless book is that pill if people would grab it and read it and learn how to learn. Without the Without. nasty side effects. Without yeah. the side effects, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so we want to do something special. You know, you've been a dear friend forever and we love to do this for people who have books. That, that we support. I want everyone, number one, to go to limitlessbook.com, grab your own copy. But for those of you that are willing to share your biggest takeaway from this episode on Instagram, so you can show Jim a thank you for pouring into you guys. If you'd share your biggest takeaway from this episode and tag Jim and myself and Lori in your stories so that we see it and can do this, we'll give the first 100 of you, we will buy it ourselves and send it to you ourselves. So again, for the first 100 of you that are listening right now, if you would take us in your, your biggest breakthrough, your biggest takeaway on your stories in, in uh, Instagram, then Lori and I will personally buy and send you a, a limitless expanded edition book as a thank you for listening and, and thank you for letting Jim know what your takeaway was. Yeah, just so generous. Wow. Thank you. I want to just thank the two of you and, and whoever's listening to this right now, get on that. 
That, that, yeah, that right, abs. right, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Like, go, learn, go quick, go quick. Yes, go, <laughs> go quick. K W I A K. So listen, and for everybody else, you know, if you're not the first hundred, go over to limitlessbook.com. Make sure you grab your copy. Grab one for a friend. It's always a great gift. And don't forget to go to mybrainanimal.com. Right, oh that's God, what it was so for the quiz. Yeah, they could post their picture of their animal and, and tag the three of us also. Because I'm curious. Yes. Oh my God! If you do that, that's extra credit. I'm, that's get you curious, a book for yeah. sure. If you do that. I'm very curious what the majority of your communities are. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see the pattern there. So yeah, when you take the quiz at My Brain Animal, there's a link in my easy link in my Instagram. You'll get uh, some of this art, and then they'll uh, post it and tag the three of us so we get to see it. What animal okay. you are? That's us, awesome. That yeah. gets some extra credit for sure. And guys, make sure you take the three of us, mainly me, because I'm the one that's going to be compiling these and sending them to our assistant to to buy and send you guys a book. So tag Lori, take myself and take Jim so we can all see it. Jim, brother, listen, you know, we love you. We're so grateful for the work that you do because we've seen behind the curtain, you work tirelessly, you. constantly trying to improve the way that you're getting this information out to the mm-hmm. world, the way that you teach. You're one of the best teachers on the planet. And I know that you are making millions, literally millions of lives better by teaching people how to learn better. So grateful for you. And you guys make sure you go take that quiz because it was so much fun. I learned so much about myself and you're you're pretty much going to get a free book. Mybrainanimal.com. <laughs> All right, Jim, thank you so much for being on, brother. We sure appreciate you. I oh, love you both so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Hey y'all, I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton. And it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it.